Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to FSI's Unlocking the Power of Microsoft Cloud for Nonprofit webinar. My name is Ryan Yeagle. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at FSI Strategies. I'm just going to go through a few housekeeping items before we begin. This session will be recorded and I will provide you a link to the recording just following the webinar. We'll be taking a few polls throughout the presentation and we would appreciate your participation. These polls will pop up on the screen and you can insert your answer and then you'll be able to see um, everyone else's answers as well. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to insert them into the question section of the GoToWebinar platform. Also, if you have any technical issues throughout the webinar, please feel free to insert them there as well and I'll be happy to assist. I'd like to take a moment to introduce Andy Nelson. Andy is the Vice President of Microsoft Technology Strategy here at FSI Strategies. Andy is an expert of Microsoft technology specializing in Microsoft 365, Azure, and enterprise mobility and security with a focus on aligning business problems to technology solutions. Andy works really closely with FSI uh, clients to ensure their success, leveraging up-to-date Microsoft tools and technology to achieve their goals. Welcome, Andy. Thank you for presenting today. My pleasure, Ryan. Thanks for that introduction. Uh, so I know we have a number of folks joining us on the call uh, that we're already working with, but for those of you who don't know FSI, we are a 19-year-old Microsoft consulting partner, professional services, and managed services provider. Uh, focused on helping organizations leverage technology to succeed and grow. And my role as the VP of Microsoft Technology Strategy is to help our clients find opportunities where they can use technology as a lever to close the gap on their business and mission goals. So uh, here's a quick overview of our partnership with Microsoft. You can see some of our credentials and accolades there. Um, particularly that we have uh, eight gold competencies and, and four silver, which means that um, we're qualified in Microsoft's eyes to, to help you pretty much with all of the cloud technologies across Office 365, Azure, and Dynamics. Um, and you can see at the bottom of the slide, we have a close relationship with Microsoft Tech for Social Impact. That's something I wanted to point out. So if you're not familiar with Tech for Social Impact, this is the elite group of nonprofit specialists inside of Microsoft. So they're not just technology experts, they have specialized industry knowledge that's relevant to the nonprofit sector. And they work with Microsoft's most strategic, about 1,000 or so accounts worldwide in the nonprofit sector. So while they can't work with every customer one-on-one, -on -one, uh, they do produce materials, events, uh, and solutions um, that everyone that's uh, a nonprofit customer can access. They're the group that's behind this set of solutions that we're gonna talk about today. So speaking of what we're talking about today, we're gonna to go over what is cloud for nonprofit and the four specific nonprofit scenarios that it helps you tackle. For each solution that's in the tool set, we're gonna go over the use cases for it, as well as the key features. And then finally, we'll go over how you can get these and what the licensing and pricing is. So um, before I jump into what is Cloud for Nonprofit, I'd love to just take a poll from the audience here um, and just let us know what is the biggest challenge you're facing today or what which one of these most closely resembles that, either donor engagement, volunteer management, um, demonstrating impact back to your donors, a combination of those, um, or if you live in a perfect world, uh, none. Okay, it looks like we've got uh, a smattering of results there. Um, so it looks like uh, some of you are, are, are struggling with some different challenges there. And uh, we're gonna be pointing out how each of the solutions here has a use case to, to solve one of those. So if we cover briefly, what is Cloud for Nonprofit just from a high level? This is a set of pre-configured tools, templates and solutions on the Microsoft Cloud to target these four key nonprofit scenarios that you can see in the diagram on that slide. Knowing your donors, delivering effective programming, accelerating your outcomes, and of course, securing your donor and participant information. So nonprofits have always had to do more with less. So it's critical that we use every opportunity to maximize your effort with technology. And many of you are already using the Microsoft Cloud. These solutions are focused on 
how can you leverage those tools to get the most out of your effort in these four areas? So some of them are, are pre-configured templates you can deploy, some are apps that run on top of Office 365 uh, and Dynamics, um, and others are um, solutions that you can deploy into your environment. Okay, so let's talk about that first scenario, which is understanding your donors and connecting with them. We know that uh, in times of uncertainty, say hypothetically a global pandemic, that discretionary spending, including charitable donation goes down. So you have smaller gifts to work with and with the number of issues rising globally, your donors uh, are in more competition for their, there's more competition for their attention. So you have fewer donors to engage with, um, and the, the gift size is being reduced. So you really need to make sure that you're maximizing that engagement. There are two solutions in this first edition of Microsoft Cloud for Nonprofit designed to help you get the most out of your donor engagement. The first one is an app called Fundraising and Engagement. So this is a full featured constituent relationship management system that allows you to manage the, const the constituent household uh, as well as organizational donations and manage the life cycle of that fundraising opportunity from start to finish and also process the payment right on the platform. Uh, it's an app that deploys within your Office 365 environment. This actually runs on Dynamics 365. So if you are already using Dynamics 365, this gives you some out of the box customization, very specific to nonprofit fundraising and donor engagement. Um, and if not, you can deploy this um, without a lot of technical effort. We, you can deploy it um, using clicks, really, not uh, scripting or anything like that. If you take a look at uh, the fundraising engagement app here, this is a fictitious organization called Contoso. And I've got to this from my Office 365 environment. So if I was in OneDrive or Teams or a SharePoint site, I would get to this just from clicking the app launcher on the left like I, I normally would. And instead of choosing OneDrive or, or Teams or SharePoint, I would choose fundraising engagement and it would take me here. This is just one of about 10 or 12 dashboards that come pre-configured out of the box. And I'll point out a couple key areas here. So in the chart all the way on the right, we can see donations by opportunity manager. And so it looks like Greg is doing pretty great there. He's got $770,000 um, in, in contributions for the fiscal year. So if I wanted to dive deeper into that and see what's making up that bar, I would click on the bar and it would allow me to choose how I wanted to break that out. Maybe if I wanted to see if I, to, if I could break that out um, by specific donor or household um, or, or by organization versus an individual contributor. If I look on the left in the recent major gifts received over 10,000, I can see a list there and there's a, a particularly generous one at the top, Hilda Caval Cavallari for 50,000. If I were to click on her name to get more information on that donor, it would take me into her donor profile where I can see everything I need to know about her. So on the right, I can see which objectives that she's contributed to. And then in the middle and on the bottom, I can see other members of her household and I can see how they're interfacing with my organization as well. Uh, to get more detail on her, you can see under her name, sort of in the top left and below that, there's a series of tabs there where you can get even more detailed information. So if I were to click donor information, this gives me her entire donation history with the organization so I can um, see how her contribution has evolved over time. Uh, Hilda, this particular contact, isn't a volunteer. She's just a donor. But if she had participated in one of our volunteer engagements, that tab would show me which engagement she had participated in. And let's say I've looked at Hilda, I've seen her donation history. Now I still want more information. I need to get some details with someone from my organization who's worked with her. If I click on the administrative tab, it'll show me who owns this relationship. So I see that Greg Winston owns the relationship with Hilda. If I hover over his name, it shows me Greg's contact info and I can either email him from here or if I click this instant message button, I can send Greg an email, an, excuse me, an instant message from Teams right from here. So I don't have to, leave this app, open Teams, start the message, I can just hover over his name and reach out to him right here. So 
That's one of the benefits of consolidating as much of your business apps as you can on a single platform. Uh, there's a lot of value in that compared to using different point solutions by getting on a, a single platform. One of those benefits is that uh, it's easier to integrate the apps with less technical in, uh, effort and administrative overhead. The other is that it's easier to connect the data from different apps so that you can draw insights across them. So most organizations have very detailed data, but it's often very difficult to make use of it because it's a manual process to take the data from system one and then combine it with data from system two. And then if you have three or four systems, that process becomes you know, geometrically more complex. So if there's one thing you could take away from this, um, solutions aside, it's the, the idea that there's a lot of value to standardizing as much as you can on a consistent platform rather than individual technology solutions and ensuring that the solutions on the platform are using a consistent data model. Uh, everything in Cloud for Nonprofit here uses an open standard third-party uh, model called the Common Data Model for Nonprofit or the Nonprofit Data Model. It's not something that's made by Microsoft. This is available to everyone in the industry. And the value of using that is that there's an entire industry of people out there creating solutions to work with data that standardizes to that model. It's, it's similar to if you were buying a mattress and you buy a twin, queen, or king size mattress, you can go to Target and there's a thousand different sheets you can buy that you know are going to fit that mattress rather than if you made one custom. So one of the tools you can get out of the box from standardizing on the common data model and using fund, fundraising engagement app is this Power BI dashboard. And so these you can deploy with a click of a button and there are dozens and dozens more that other contributors in the industry are creating. You can find more, if you, if you just look up common data model for nonprofit, you can find a plethora of resources there. So next I'm gonna get, so this is one solution. Um, for donor engagement in cloud for nonprofit, it's the fundraising engagement app, which is a full featured constituent relationship management platform. Next, we're going to go over constituent marketing journeys. But before we dive into that, I'm just going to ask another poll of the audience here, which is how do you nurture the relationship when you get either a new donor or a new volunteer contributing to the mission? How do you nurture that relationship and make sure that it's growing over time? Do you have an automated process to do that through journeys? Are you doing it manually or are you somewhere in between? Okay, so it looks like we, we have a, um, a variety of, of answers there. So let's take a look at constituent marketing journeys. What these are, are pre-baked uh, communication templates and really logical paths of your donor or volunteer's relationship that you can nurture them through. And so it comes with some, some templated communications that you can send out to do things like thank a donor or ask for a recurring gift um, or onboard a volunteer. And uh, I know everyone likes the templates, you know, tell me what to say. But uh, really the magic here that uh, you, you want to look at is, is not the templates and the pre-baked journeys, it's the automation behind the journeys to ensure that you can have deliberate, uh, deliberate thought put behind all the interactions you have nurturing that donor and volunteer. And then once you come up with that well thought out plan that it's enacted automatically without one of your donor engagement managers or a volunteer manager manually going out and doing that because not only is that taxing, it leaves us opportunity for human error. So if we take a look at what this would look like, this is the constituent marketing app and I have kind of a, a landing page here where I can jump into different areas. And if I was in Office 365, just like the fundraising engagement app, you can see that app launcher in the top left next to the organization logo Contoso, I can jump to this just by clicking that and then choosing the constituent marketing app. If I click on that left-hand navigation, journeys, we can take a look at the these templated journeys that are pre-configured. So you can see I've got seven here that are out of the box. You can, of course, edit these, create your own. 
Um, but these are the seven that it, that it comes with uh, that are ready to go out of the box. So if we take a look at one of them, let's dive into the donor welcome journey. So if you were using the fundraising engagement app, um, then you could trigger this journey to start once they've contributed their first time donation. So when someone gives that donation, that starts the journey and then they go through this logical workflow. So you can see they get a thank you email right away and then they wait for three days and then you get an email with more instructions um, about, uh, about the or more instructions about engaging with the organization. And based on whether or not the donor clicks the link in the email, then they go down a different branching decision tree. So if we take a look at those two different branches on the left, if they do click it, um, now we ask them if they're interested in participating in one of our volunteer engagements. And then a week after that, they get the newsletter. And then a few weeks later, we ask uh, if they'd be willing to contribute a recurring gift. But if they haven't clicked it, we back off a little bit um, and send them a newsletter a few weeks later and then re-engage. So uh, the templates are fantastic. I think the magic here really is in the automation behind this. So you can put deliberate thought in how you want to engage with them um, and then put the process in place and let it flow without burdening someone with the manual tasks on it. So now th those were the two solutions to help you engage with donors. Now there are four solutions in Cloud for Nonprofit designed to help you manage your volunteer engagement. Um, so this is to help you deliver effective programming. We talked about nonprofits have the necessity to do more with less. You know, I can't think of anything that epitomizes that more than maximizing the contributions of your volunteer effort. So the goals behind these four solutions and you don't have to deploy all four. You don't, none of the solutions here are, are all or none. You can deploy any one, two, th three, or, or all of these um, as they make sense for the organization. So the key behind these four solutions are to help you engage with volunteers, help them get information uh, without as much manual interaction, and to help you manage that process of a volunteer's participation and their the evolution of their participation with the organization over time um, without spreadsheets. So the first solution here is a volunteer management app. And this is designed to do exactly what I just mentioned, get off of spreadsheets and make this a more uh, deliberate process that you know, if someone, for example, won the lottery and, and disappeared, um, all of that information about the volunteers' engagement with the organization wouldn't be lost uh, in, in their own personal notes or in their brain. You would be able to um, go into the app and then look at their profile, the engagements that they've already participated in, look at things like the number of service hours they contributed, um, and, uh, and even implement things like a qualification process. So if we take a look at that app, you can see on my daily dashboard here, I've got three different areas, the engagements that are live right now, uh, the participation from volunteers that's in review, and then engagements I have in draft. So this allows me to um, get these in a platform where it's gonna be much easier for me to collaborate on these with someone else in the organization rather than sharing an Excel file with them. So for example, uh, I can click on invasive species, excuse me, invasive species renewal, and I can share that with a coworker so that they can open that uh, engagement in this app and see all the details about it. And any notes they add to it there, I'll be able to see on my side and everyone coll can collaborate on them together. Once we've got that, overall volunteer management process off of a spreadsheet and into um, a more systematized platform. Now, how can you actually increase your engagement with the volunteers? If you're using Teams, this Teams template makes it easier for you to leverage that platform you're already using and now get the most out of it with your volunteers. So the Manage Volunteers Teams template is just a pre-configured set of uh, sharing settings and channels for you to collaborate on volunteer engagement opportunities with your internal staff 
as well as interact directly with the volunteers where you could do things like um, share onboarding information, make announcements about upcoming engagements, uh, or collaborate with your, your coworkers um, on a particular engagement or volunteer effort, like updating volunteer onboarding materials. And so to deploy this, again, it's, it's not a technical effort. Oh, excuse me, getting click happy. So to deploy this, it's not a technical effort. Uh, you can um, deploy that uh, through your Office 365 uh, Solution Center um, and then customize any of the settings there. In addition to the Teams template, Volunteer Center is a SharePoint site template. So if you're using SharePoint as an intranet internally, this is a quick way where you can spin up essentially a volunteer intranet. This is a SharePoint site designed for you to give them one place where they can get all the information they need, upcoming engagements, onboarding materials, and they can connect with other volunteers. So if you're looking for ways to kind of facilitate the community building on the volunteers end without you manually driving that process forward, um, you can give them access to Volunteer Center um, or the Managed Teams template, or you can use both. Uh, if you are using Teams um, and the Managed Teams template, the back end of Teams for document storage and collaboration is SharePoint. Um, so this would work well if you're using both of them in conjunction, where if someone shares a document in the in the Teams channel to, to review or talk about, on the back end, it's going to be here in Volunteer Center. So this gives you one place to push them. Um, but since it is on SharePoint, this would be for volunteers that are already onboarded into the organization that you've given an organizational account to. So they would need an organizational account to log into this because it's an internal SharePoint site. Um, you can use your E1 licenses though, and if you're approved for the nonprofit charity pricing, you know, E1 are free as a donation, So, um, you, but you do need to onboard them so they can log in. If you want to engage with, uh, Sorry, skipping ahead. So this is a, a, a glimpse of what the Volunteer Center looks like. You can see that this is um, a SharePoint site template. It has Contoso's branding, our demo organization. You can match this to your branding. You can customize this as needed simply by dragging and dropping uh, the different components on the screen. You don't need to be a developer in order, or a designer in order to do this. You can drag and drop all of these components. Okay, so that's an internal SharePoint site where you can facilitate community, share materials. What about engaging with volunteers that haven't been onboarded to the organization yet? Uh, you know, I, I know one piece of feedback I've heard is the, the cringing feeling of a volunteer looking for a way to participate with the organization, um, not being able to find it and uh, becoming frustrated and giving up. And you're, and you never become aware of it. So this is designed um, to help you show them what opportunities are available to participate from your public facing website and just make it as easy as possible with minimal effort on your side. So this is a public facing portal. You would integrate it with your website and it gives you a simple place right here. I'll show you what it looks like. It gives you a simple place where uh, a volunteer that has never been on board with the organization. They may have just heard about you from a friend, seen an engagement outside. Um, they go to your website, they you know can click engagements or contribute or participate, and they'll see a list of all your published engagements here. They can search through that list and they can filter it on the left. These are some pre-baked filters in there. You can see disaster response and, and family friendly. You can change those to whatever you need them to be. Um, so if I was a volunteer and I was looking for something I could do with the whole family, I could select family friendly in my filters there. And then it would show me, okay, so there's an opportunity I can participate in coming up May 14th, I can clean up Saltwater State Park uh, and have fun with the whole family. So the thought behind this is just make it as easy as possible for them to see what opportunities they have to participate, where uh, it, it works for them, and you can uh, and filter them by qualifications as well to make sure it works for you. So just about making it as easy as it can be. So those are the four solutions designed to help you get the most out of your volunteer effort. So you've got the volunteer management app to get that overall process off of spreadsheets and into a platform 
um, where everyone can collaborate on the data. There's a, a Teams template, a SharePoint site template, and a public facing portal that you can integrate with the website. So let's talk about that next scenario, which is accelerating your mission outcomes. And the tool in this first release of Cloud for Nonprofit designed to do that is about connecting the data from the different parts of your the life cycle of your funding so that you can go back and show the impact of a specific donation to a donor so that that cycle can repeat. That's one thing I find very unique about nonprofit, just by the intrinsic nature of removing the motive, switching it from a margin to a mission, um, it's not self-fueling anymore. So an investor invests in a business to create income and then the income repeats that process. With a donor, they're not trying to create another they're not trying to create a monetary return on investment that can fund another donation their return on investment is the impact of the mission uh, and so obviously you know the more you can show that impact um, the more likely it is that you're going to be able to continue engaging with them so the tool in this first release in order to do that is a program impact dashboard this is a power bi dashboard that just makes it easy to connect the data from fundraising to donation to distribution, or excuse me, to designation, and then to the program delivery, and then impact. The reason, and so this is a dashboard that comes as part of Cloud for Nonprofit. The reason that this works is because the tools are on a single platform, so there's not an, a technical effort to integrate the different solutions, um, and that they're using a common data model, that nonprofit common data model, so that information from fundraising uh, can coalesce with the information from your program delivery, for example. So if we take a look at the program impact dashboard, it actually comes with four pre-configured dashboards. If you have skills in Power BI or have someone in your organization that does, you can create your own, you can add to this, um, but if you don't, you can use these as templates and then just customize these different visual displays as needed to, sh to display the information as you need to um, to convey whatever you're trying to back to those donors. So there's an impact delivery overview here that kind of gives a, um, a, a high level overview of how all the programs together are contributing to the mission. Then there's program summary uh, that, that shows key metrics of the programs here. Program monitoring shows each of those programs progress over time. Uh, and then finally, program impact here is designed to give you that direct, here's what this gift did for our mission and show that very direct um, impact of a specific donation to a specific mission. So next, let's talk about that fourth scenario, which is protecting your data. Obviously, this is at the center of everything, and that's why that diagram we showed at the beginning has the other three objectives on the outside and this in the center, because if we can't do this, um, our efforts everywhere else fail, essentially, right? Th this can topple the mission if we're not careful about it. And especially with the global cybersecurity landscape changing, we have to be um, particularly careful here, especially when we're dealing with um, financial data. So many of you using the Microsoft 365 platform are already familiar with some of the inherent security tools there. But in addition to the native tools uh, in Microsoft 365, Cloud for Nonprofit has done some special offerings that they provided in this first release for nonprofits um, to help you with unique concerns. And the first one is called Account Guard. So like we talked about, there's already security tools in there. One thing of particular difficulty to do from a cybersecurity perspective is to be able to detect an attack that's being globally distributed. So most, um, you know, most independent organizations wouldn't be able to financially distribute an attack with resources all over the world wide enough so that you wouldn't be able to detect it with a, a traditional cybersecurity tool. Um, but a nation state attack could be a completely different story. So Microsoft has a global security network where they process more authentications than any other platform in the world, more than 6 billion authentications per day. Um, so they have an incredible amount of intelligence there. 
and they work directly with uh, national and international security organizations like on the national side like FBI, Homeland Security, NSA, um, and then equivalent organizations on an international level. And what Account Guard is, is allows you to leverage that global cybersecurity network so that Microsoft will notify your organization if it looks like there is an, any type of nation state coordinated, um, not breach, but even attempt to access your data or one of the accounts of your organization. Um, and what I think is particularly useful, also one of the personal accounts of any of your organization, staff members, volunteers, um, or, or, or affiliates. Uh, for personal accounts, it's limited to Outlook, um, Hotmail, and MSN, I believe, but uh, that's one area that can kind of get swept under the rug in terms of securing up your, um, your security weaknesses. The personal accounts often, an attacker can, even if they don't have access to corporate data there, they can use that to understand the communication of the people that work with your organization so that they can later effectively impersonate one. Um, so just something to be aware of. Account Guard is free if you are qualified for nonprofit pricing. Just go to nonprofit.microsoft.com and you can turn this on. Okay, so in addition to that solution, I recommend everyone turn that on, right? There, it's, a, it's no cost, so that there isn't a downside to using it. Uh, if you need help with that process, you know, we're happy to help. Um, there's also training that's released for your non-IT staff and if you have an IT department for your IT staff as well. So for general staff, these, uh, these are four example trainings that I put up here, but there are dozens available. So some key ones I put up are, you know, protecting yourself from scams. Uh, I always prefer the protection to be automated um, so that we're not leaving it up to chance or, or, or human error to, to break that process. But it's good for people to understand generally um, what is happening and how someone may be attempting to compromise the organization, especially considering there's something tomorrow that I'm not aware of yet and that your organization uh, may not be aware of either. So just understanding the philosophies and the methods that are being employed helps there. Um, and at the bottom of that list, there's an intro to cybersecurity training that, that I recommend. If any of your staff are interested in a more holistic understanding of cybersecurity, for a non-IT IT professional, so it's without getting into bits and bytes. If you have an IT department internally, um, here are some key tools that uh, I think can accelerate their, um, their ramping up with a Microsoft 365 security tool set. So the first one is the Administrator Security Tools Toolkit because there are a plethora of tools in Microsoft 365 focused on security. This will help them understand what to use, when, and how to apply it. Uh, Microsoft Learn is a publicly available free collection of technology training. I use Microsoft Learn all the time. Um, you, you may have heard Ryan mention in my bio that I, uh, that I have a number of certifications and, and try to stay up to date there. The majority of my preparation for those is through Microsoft Learn. I'm using the same publicly available resources uh, um, that anyone else would have access to. Uh, and there's a security specific site there called the Security Skilling Hub you can find from Microsoft Learn that will give you recommended learning paths uh, based on the functional role that IT professional is trying to, to um, prepare to be able to deliver. Uh, and then the last benefit is something called a virtual training day. This is something that wasn't available publicly. It was only available to internal Microsoft employees or Microsoft partners qualified at a specific level. This is in person once uh, and now primarily virtual instructor led training sessions. There's kind of crash courses in a particular technology um, where you get uh, instruction from an industry expert, uh, hands on experience, and then you can do you know live Q and answer, uh, excuse me, Q and A with the instructor. Um, typically, th these were not available to the public or to customers, and um, a, an equivalent training would run about maybe about $2,500 or so for, for an IT professional to sign up for one. Um, with Cloud for Nonprofit, uh, depending on the licensing you choose, um, these will be available to you free once a month. You'll be able to access one of these. So speaking of licensing, let's go over how you can actually get Cloud for Nonprofit. 
So standard is the paid license and basic is the free license. Standard is the one that comes with that virtual training day monthly that I was referring to. But out of all the solutions we've covered today, all but two of them are available in the free basic license. So you don't have to pay any additional cost to get most of what we talked about. Some of the more advanced things um, do require the standard license, um, which is just based on your organization size. If you're 250 employees or below, it's $750 a month. Um, and that's not per user, it's per the organization. And if you're 251 employees or higher, it's $2,000 a month. Uh, employee is a full-time employee, so that doesn't count part-time staff, you know, seasonal interns, um, partners, or volunteers. Uh, even if you've given those volunteers accounts, um, they don't count towards your 250. So let's go over what is the difference between what you get with basic and versus standard. So um, you can see most of what we covered uh, is available in basic. There's only two gaps there on solutions, which is the program impact dashboard and knowing your donors and supporters, the constituent marketing journey. So um, fundraising engagement is included for free out of knowing your donors and supporters. It's just the automated marketing journeys that are not. So for each of those solutions, you do need to already be licensed for the tool it's using in Microsoft 365. So for example, Volunteer Center, that's a SharePoint site. So you have to have SharePoint internally uh, in order to, um, to qualify to get that for free by adding Cloud for Nonprofit. Um, the Teams template, you have to be licensed for Teams already. Um, fundraising engagement, that runs on Dynamics 365. So um, it's no additional cost to run that with Dynamics 365. If you don't have Dynamics 365, you would need to get the sales license um, in order to use that app. And then the bottom three bullets here are also only available in standard. Those aren't solutions, those are extra benefits that you get um, with the standard license. So the first one is industry specific support. So that advanced elite group within Microsoft called Tech for Social Impact that doesn't have just Techno technological expertise. They have specialized industry knowledge. Um, you can get support directly from them. And for critical issues, it's less than a one hour response time. Uh, so instead of just help being able to help with a technical error on the platform, they can help you uh, if you're trying to figure out um, why it's not accomplishing what you're trying to use it to accomplish. And they would understand where you're coming from and things like you know donor engagement or um, or volunteer management integration, for example. Um, and then the advanced training benefit is those monthly Microsoft virtual training days. So those in-person instructor-led events for technical professionals, those you'll get monthly access to those with the standard license. And finally, you'll get a relationship with the Tech for Social Impact team where they'll give you an annual sort of um, strategic check-in and um, help you kind of plan that roadmap. Uh, many of you have, have already come to us by way of Tech for Social Impact, and we're already collaborating on that to, to put our heads together on your strategy. If you don't have a relationship uh, with Tech for Social Impact, or if you are you know, just looking for guidance, um, a second set of eyeballs or, or sounding board um, to bounce ideas off and see, you know, am I doing this the right way? Am I using the best practices? Uh, I'd be happy to to help anyone that that's looking for that kind of guidance. Um, you can just if you're already working with FSI, you can reach out to your account manager. Um, and if you are if you're not, I'm going to put up a contact slide where you can reach out and contact us. You can also find me on LinkedIn. I'd be happy to help anyone I can. So with that, I'm going to open it up to questions. Uh, so if you've submitted any questions, Ryan's going to relay those now. And if you have any that have come up, just enter them in the chat and Ryan will relay them over to me. Great. Thanks, Andy. That was wonderful. Yeah, I had a couple come in, so we'll just jump in. And like Andy said, if there's any others, I have the question section open. So just pop them in there and I'll be able to see them. Um, the first one that came in was outside of donors, can this be used to keep track of dues? Of membership dues? So uh, that, that's a great question. I don't know if it does that out of the box, but so it's built on a platform called Dynamics 365 and it leverages what we talked about, that nonprofit common data model. So if it doesn't do that out of the box, you would be able to add that. 
Um, and my recommendation would be to add the representation of it that's in the common data model. And the reason is because I'm sure many of us have been in an organization where you've almost felt handcuffed by your data, where you're on a legacy platform, but you, you can't get off of it because to move to the cloud solution or to migrate into the next solution, you have to first do the upgrade to that. And that requires doing the data schema transformation. And that's a huge project. So it gets put off. Um, if you stick with the nonprofit common data model, um, that will ensure that you are using the, the most common standardized approach to modeling your data. So it's not done out of the box. Um, you can add in whatever component there is from that, uh, from the nonprofit data model. So Microsoft actually refers to their philosophy behind the constituent relationship management platform as XRM, the X meaning that it, it, can, it can measure what you need it to. So the, the type of entities you put in, they can be tailored to you. So that was a very long answer to, uh, I don't think so, but it can be done. Yeah, yeah, great. So kind of on that, and I know you touched on it a little bit, but we did have one come in that says, do you offer coaching or guidance on implementing cloud for nonprofit? And how would we get started with that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, FSI, FSI Strategies is a professional services firm. So, um, you know, we're happy to engage and, and either uh, execute projects on your behalf or or work with your IT team to do that. But I'm also happy just to give you guidance. So if you just want to understand, you know, what it would look like or um, uh, or how to start the process, I'm happy to just have a conversation to kind of help you navigate that process. Great, great. And then on the licensing, we had one come in. Is there an all-inclusive license that we can take advantage of to enable all of the cloud for nonprofit features? Uh, short answer, no, there's not. Um, it, each solution, the underlying solution is licensed. E5 is the most comprehensive license on the Microsoft platform that would license everything underlying except Dynamics. That's the weak link there, that uh, Dynamics licensing isn't included in any of the bundles like M365 or Office 365. Um, the Cloud for Nonprofit license is simple on that side. It's either basic or standard. Um, but uh, th there isn't a an all-in-one, hey, I just need this, and it covers everything. So okay. happy to help you navigate that uh, those licensing waters, too. Great. Um, are we able to migrate our existing data over to cloud for nonprofit? Yeah, you, you, you can migrate your data. Um, and, you know, honestly, I think that's what you would have to do to make it useful. Um, that's the that's the bulk of the effort in enabling the, the app. Turning it on technically is essentially flipping a switch. Um, to make it useful for the organization, it's getting your existing data into it. So if your existing data is already standardized around the nonprofit common data model, first of all, you know, bravo to you, excellent forethought. Um, and that will be very simple. If it's not, you need to do a process that's um, that's known as extract, transform, and load. So getting the data out, um, and then putting it in is not all you have to do. You need to, after you get it out, extract, transform the data so it's in the right model, and then load it. So it's that ETL process. Um, but uh, there's lots of organizations that have specific expertise in that um, for CRM platforms as well as in, in the nonprofit sector. So the data migration is really the effort that you would want to look at there in terms of getting use out of that. Great. And the last one that I have here is how long does it generally take to implement cloud for nonprofit? Uh, so that was seven solutions we went over today. Some of them are really lightweight, like the Teams template. You know, you can turn that on today yourself. You know, the, the SharePoint site template, um, without being an IT professional, if you have a little bit of knowledge of SharePoint, you could do that today as well, too. Might require a little more knowledge than just the Teams template. Um, and then something like the fundraising engagement app, uh, depending on how complex your data migration is into that, um, you, you know, that you might plan something like six weeks for. So it, 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 so it varies widely. Um, the largest hurdle would be a data migration from your previous fundraising engagement solution into the Microsoft platform. 
Okay. Well, thanks, Andy. This was very helpful. And we appreciate your time. And thank you all for joining us today. We're going to give you a few minutes back. And as you can see on the screen, if you have any questions or you need assistance in any way, you can either respond to the emails that I've sent you, um, and I'll be happy to assist. You can reach out to Andy on LinkedIn directly, or you can contact us through our contact us form on our website at fsistrategies.com. Thank you, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks, Ryan.